Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Now guys, for this video, I wanted to talk about a theme that I don't think I've ever talked about here on the channel, and that is Lego Disney. Now, I am a huge Disney fan, always have been, always will be. Ever since I was a little kid, I've loved Disney movies. I feel like they're fantastic. They're just so much fun to watch. And ever since Lego started coming out with some, you know, Disney sets, I've been a huge fan of them. You know, the Disney castle, the Disney train. I've always been drawn more to the minifigure uh, base sets more than the mini doll ones, but I will say that some of the mini doll ones are just too good to pass up on, uh, especially when they depict some of my favorite movies. So that is what I'm, what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, recently, uh, Lego released a brand new Casita Madrigal set, which is this one, and I am a huge fan of the Encanto movie. It's one of my absolute all-time favorite Disney movies, and when I heard that they were coming out with a new Casita set, uh, I was thrilled because while I love the old set, the one that came out in 2021, uh, I felt it was a little bit small, you know, for the grandeur that the house has in the film. So I was very, very much looking forward to this new set. And they released it June 1st, and I think I picked it up a few weeks after that, and I was thrilled with it. It was beautiful, the colors were amazing, some of the play features were like fantastic. I didn't even know that they could include things like that. And I was really, really blown away by it. However, I did feel like some of the proportions were a little bit off when comparing, you know, pictures of the set with pictures of the casita itself. And I thought, why not just take this into my own hands and sort of enhance the set, which is something that I always find a lot of fun, especially because, you know, like I said, some of the features were absolutely amazing and I wanted to keep absolutely all of them, as well as bringing in some features that the old set had that weren't in the new set that I actually really, really liked. Um, so it, it became sort of this like journey of like, you know, taking apart the sets and then dissecting what I wanted to keep, what I didn't want to keep, what I wanted to enhance. And I always find these like, you know, revamping sessions a lot of fun. So it took me a few days uh, and one small bricklink order, but I finally did it and I am really, really happy with the result. So I'm not gonna ramble on and let's just go ahead and take a look at the build. And this is it guys, the modified Casa Madrigal. Now I'm really happy with how I was able to capture the proportions of the house that we see in the movie. Uh, I feel like while the set is still so amazing, uh, there were some issues with sizing. I'm pretty sure budget restraints were involved in that. Uh, but I really wanted to revamp the set and make it look a lot more like it does in the movie and just like enhance it overall while still keeping a lot of the features that it had, as I mentioned before, uh, because a lot of the play functions are just incredible. So this is just a really quick overview of the outside before we take an in-depth look into it. But I feel like overall, it looks a lot more like it is in the movie. It's still super, super colorful. And I'm just very, very happy with the overall result. So let's take a closer look at the outside. All right, so to sort of break down the outside, I think the best thing is to go floor by floor. So we're gonna start off with the ground floor. Now the ground floor is the floor that I changed the least. The only thing I really did to the ground floor was add uh, some hanging plants as well as just enhancing the overall foliage. Like the palm tree is a lot taller and has a, a lot more pieces in it. This sort of like little tree now covers all the way up to the to the roof. And that's really much it for changing the ground floor. Uh, the ground floor was like really, really solid. Uh, now moving on to the second floor, uh, what I did here was I added this little roof piece that this balcony has in the movie as well as a little toucan because you know they're very very present in the film and I thought that was important and I was still able to keep uh, this like moving shutter feature as well as this feature where you can move the roof tiles from the back which I thought was like a lot of fun. Um, I did uh, change these out for an extra plate just to you know hide those like gaping studs like this one. Uh, but I thought that was really, really great. And then uh, for Isabella's tower, I also brought it up a few levels just to make it a little bit taller than this roof section. And then the third floor is really where most of the changes happen. Uh, I added a lot more detail to this particular facade, as well as adding a feature from the old Madrigal house that I really, really loved, which was uh, the chimney being able to change the weather. So we have a rainbow here and you can change it to a cloudy day. I thought that was a lot of fun. Uh, then for Abuela's room, I added a bunch more foliage and I pushed it back further to give the illusion that it's, you know, further back in the house. And then Bruno's tower area is completely different. It is so much larger, so much more prominent. Uh, I added a bunch of, you know, facade details with these like tiles and uh, I added some shutters to these windows just, you know, to make it a little bit more detailed. But I think like the overall look of it, it just brings everything together so, so well. And you can really, really, you know, tell that it looks a lot more like it does in the film. And I'm just so, so happy uh, with the final result. So let's turn it around and take a look at the inside. 
So when designing this modification for the build, it was really, really important to me to keep all of the interior spaces that were originally there, if not to enhance them. So I'm gonna start with the breakdown of every single room inside this house. Most of them are still the same, uh, but we'll get into them as we analyze them individually. So we're gonna start down here with the dining room, which I absolutely love. There's a lot of stickers in here. Uh, you have one for the plates, and then you have one for the family tree, and I think they just add the right amount of detail. It looks so nice. I love the chair build that they use, and we have Dolores right here. Uh, it's just so, so nice. This room has not changed at all uh, from its original design from the set. Then we have sort of the entryway with Luisa and her donkey. Uh, there's a bunch of musical instruments around. Uh, you have like a record player there in the background, if you can tell, a little typewriter. And then, you know, some portraits that are uh, stickers and I think they work really, really well. Uh, but yeah, this room also not much change. I think I just added this umbrella holder and that's pretty much it. Then for the kitchen, uh, again, still the same as the set. I think it works perfectly. I love the stickers here. So bright, so colorful, lots of plants, which I love. Uh, and then Camilo hanging out right there. Moving up, we have Antonio's bedroom. Uh, this one, again, I think the only thing that changed was that I had to bring this down uh, one brick. But other than that, everything is pretty much the same. I really like the detail here. I love the animal furniture. And then I also added uh, this little present box uh, from the old set, which I thought was like really important. Then we have Mirabel's room. Uh, again, the same as, as it was originally in the original set. I love the use of stickers here. I think it adds a ton of detail. And as you can see, you can still use uh, that play feature that I mentioned earlier. I think it works perfectly. Now, moving on to Isa's room, this is the first room that I really, you know, had to make some changes to. It's quite a bit taller than it was in the original set. Uh, the bed still, you know, hangs and moves like a hammock, which is great. Um, I did add a, a little bit more detail to the ground, uh, you know, to the rug area, and then a lot more foliage uh, other than the stickers that they presented, because I don't know if you can tell, but like right back there, there's like a few stickers. Uh, but I wanted a lot more brick built leaves and stuff just to make it look a little bit more, you know, lush and fleshed out. So that's what I did up top. Now, moving on up to Abuela's room. I think Abuela's room is one of the more different rooms. It used to be uh, a lot more square and a lot deeper, but you know, for the sake of uh, moving the room back visually, I had to um, make it a lot thinner, but I was able to keep absolutely every single piece of furniture. Um, I'm just gonna get her out of the way. You can see uh, the candle, we have the little chair as well as her bed. And then uh, right here, I added this uh, painting from the uh, Houses of the World set. That was a promotional set that I feel it fits in perfectly uh, with the vibe. Uh, the only thing I wasn't able to keep was the little knitting basket, which is a shame, uh, but I think it's worth the sacrifice just to you know be able to uh, give the build the look that it has now. And then uh, moving on to Bruno's tower, I was able to keep uh, the little drawer for the vision thing, as well as the turning feature uh, of hiding the vision behind the falling sand, which I thought was like really, really important to keep. Uh, and then I brought in from the old set as well, uh, this sticker piece with a bunch of like the different Bruno position things uh, for finding divisions. And then uh, this piece to represent uh, broken vision shards. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it for the inside of the house. I'm very, very happy with all the features that it has and the features that I was able to keep. Um, very, very proud of it, honestly. Um, but now let's go ahead and take one final look at the whole build. So that is it for this up close look at my modified Casa Madrigal. Uh, I've placed the figures outside so you can kind of get a sense of what it looks like with some characters, you know, walking around outside. Uh, I'm very, very happy with the overall look. I feel like the proportions again, is what I really wanted to capture correctly from the film and I feel like I achieved that regardless of if it's not like a massive massive build because I have seen some amazing Casa Madrigal mocks out there like some really big and amazing ones uh, I would love to build something like that someday but for now I feel like this modification of the set is more than enough I'm just really really pleased with just the aesthetic that it gives and how well like it captures you know what you see in the movie versus what you get now with the bricks so I'm gonna call it a success. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and talk about some final thoughts. And that's it, you guys. I am so happy with how the build turned out. I'm mostly happy that I was able to keep absolutely all of the features from the new and old set. Uh, that was like my main goal from the very beginning. 
uh, and I'm really happy that I was able to achieve it. I feel like the overall look of the build is very, very accurate to how we see in the movie, and it's just a really great, you know, display piece now overall. Not that the other set wasn't, it's just, you know, a little enhanced, which is what I wanted. I really enjoy this sort of like taking something that's already designed and, you know, just adding to it, making it different. I feel like it's a lot of fun, kind of like a team project, I guess. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed it too. I hope you liked the build, I hope you enjoyed this video, but that is gonna be it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.